Friends, this is Rahul Magan here as a Chief Executive Officer of Treasury Consulting PT Limited, and today we would be covering a very dedicated topic which is on variable rate demand obligation. Now, as you very well understand that the structured derivative market is quite big, and there is no bank in this world who is able to give you the exact amount of that structured derivative market. So there is no bank. If you look at the uh, reports of different banks like Goldman Sachs, Credit Suisse, J.P. Morgan, Standard Chartered, and and and, and different banks, they all differ. The reason being the source. Now, if you go to the G3 banks like Goldman Sachs, Credit Suisse, J.P. Morgan, compared to the G7 banks, they might have a little authentication compared to the other bank. Today, we would be covering one of the very important topics, which is in the municipal securities of United States, which is known as variable rate. Demand obligation. It's a very unfortunate fact that majority of the countries in the world, including India, do not have any municipal market. Now, if you look at India, municipals are getting the money from the government, the state governments, and the state governments are getting the money from the taxes, which is on the petroleum, which is on the diesel product, maybe your indirect taxes, maybe on your GST. Now, if you compare from the US. U.S. We shortly refer. We don't refer them as municipal. We refer this as munis. Munis have the largest market share in U.S. If we take U.S. government borrowing apart, according to if 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 I'm, if I'm not wrong, somewhere in 2014-2015 Davos, there was a question that being asked during this conference that if U.S. would default, what would be the impact on the municipal securities market? I don't know how many people are following the uh, the divorce because after divorce, the, immediately after divorce, there is a report which is coming up which tells about the risk the world do have. Every year it happened, and believe me, this report is worth reading. That will this will tell you. It's report by the World Economic Forum. It's the title is a global risk, so it will tell you each and every risk the world is facing. It's a pretty good report, decent report. Somewhere in 2015, this report suggested that roughly more than 300 trillion to somewhere 350 trillion dollar exact figure I don't remember now, but I remember this was somewhere in between. Somewhere 300 to 350 trillion dollar of securities which are only being issued by U.S. municipal, uh, different municipals like Texas, Philadelphia, and so on and so forth, and it excludes all the guarantees which are given by the municipals. Because generally the municipals in U.S. issue two type of securities. One, which they are backing. Like if I am a Philadelphia municipal board, I issue a security in the favor of an investor. I get the money. That money I will spend in terms of the development and so on and so forth. And I will give the guarantee. This is one part. Another thing is the guarantee is being given by the U.S. government. So three hundred trillion dollars, somewhere three to three fifty trillion dollar is the amount which being guaranteed by the municipal. Uh, is being guaranteed by the U.S. government, so you know that amount excludes that what's being guaranteed by the board themselves. Nobody knows about that amount. That is why I said that VRDO is one of the very important topic. Leave apart how much debt U.S. have or how many debt U.S. do not have, but very important thing from the VRDO perspective is that it's a very good thing. You know, it's one of the beautiful inventions we have in 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 the in the municipal market. There are five players which are working in the VRDO. Number one, who is the issuer? For the sake of example, we have referred this as the Texas Municipal Board. Now they wanted to issue a VRDO. Now please note very carefully that 99% of the people believe that VRDO, variable rate, demand obligation, you know, floaters. And ARS, adjustable rate securities, they all are same. No, that is absolutely incorrect. Theoretically speaking, they all are same because in each case the inter interest rate is being reset at a periodic stage. But from a valuation standpoint, from an issuer standpoint, this is completely different. Reason being, this two floaters and ARS, they do not have DPLC. Direct pay letter of credit. On the comparison, VRDO have DPLC. 
there are a lot of people who have another misconception that DPLC is nothing but a credit enhancement procedure. In a lot of videos we talked about credit enhancement procedures. One thing, yes, theoretically speaking, DPO is a kind of credit enhancement procedure, but DPO is not exact credit enhancement procedure which you are talking about. Now here it works. Issuer is Texas Municipal Board who wanted to issue 700 say 30 billion dollar of security. Now when it comes to variable rate debt obligation, the one mindset which people have is that boss the tenure of the security must be somewhere one year, two year, maximum three year. No. The tenure of the security lie between 20 years to 30 years. You must be surprised. This is number one. Another thing is these going to be reset on a periodic basis. Now that periodicity is dependent upon municipal board to municipal board and also dependent upon the custodian. Don't worry, we are coming to that. There are four ways periodicities are defined in BRDO. Number one is weekly. Number one is semi sorry, semi-monthly. Another is monthly, quarterly, you might be thinking why not semi-yearly and yearly, no, because that is not the periodicity. If you go for semi-yearly, then you will never get ICAP adjustment. This is very technical in nature, so please ignore that as of now. From a VODO perspective, these are the four periodicities which they have. That is totally dependent upon the custodian and also the taxes board. Now this periodicity is being defined by a forum which is known as SIFMA. It's a forum which will, which I'm not saying they're the custodian of the fixed income market but one of the well reputed forums which we have and they publish an index which is known as municipal index. You can visit their website and you can have that. From their municipal index, they will publish this adjustable rate on weekly basis, semi-monthly basis, monthly and quarterly basis. Now here we go. Texas Municipal Board is launching, not launching, wanted to have 30 billion dollar of VRDO. Average tenure somewhere 20 to 30 years. Let us fix at 26 years. Take it as 25 years. This is the tenure. And assuming they are going for a weekly basis. Which means that every week the interest rate is going to be reset and assuming they are offering L plus 1.25 percent that L has to be changed on a periodic basis. Now they will go they need somebody that is why I said that the difference between BRDO floaters and ARS is that in the later two you do not have a DPLC but in the first case you have the DPLC. Nobody will buy Texas Municipal Board although they know that it's being backed by the US government. It's a government forum, it's being backed by the US government, so you have a sovereign guarantee. They will come to a bank, we assume that this bank is Goldman Sachs, my favorite bank as always. Goldman Sachs will create a bond purchase agreement shortly known as BPA in US. In this what Goldman Sachs would do, Goldman Sachs will say in case of any issue, technical recession in US, cash recession is US, any meltdown in the financial market, the wind up of the Texas Municipal Board or could be any reason. We are here to pay, direct pay letter of credit. So after 25 years, if any of these things would happen or do not happen, other way US government is pretty good under, under Trump administration. Uh, this municipal board which is of Texas is doing good job. They have a cash reserve either of that in the worst case or in the best case Goldman Sachs will pay to the To the subscriber or to the institutional investor directly That is why this is known as direct pay letter of credit Goldman Sachs will not pay to the board who will pay to the subscriber Goldman Sachs will directly pay to the subscriber Although in case of letter of credit, they would pay if the company do not pay. That is the difference between DPLC and LC. I hope you've been to our video which is DPLC. 
In case of LC, the bank role will come when there is a contingency. In case of DPLC, bank role will come, boss, you produced your document, documentary credit is fine, all documents are in order, here is your money, thank you very much for doing business with my client. Now, I know how to take the money with my client, you don't, you need not to be bothered about that, as simple as that. Now, in this case, Goldman Sachs will sign the DPLC in the favor of institutional investor, which is here, we assume this is an Apple Inc. Reason, they have a huge surplus cash. Apple Inc. is investing in Muniz. They have a DPLC from Goldman Sachs that in case of the worst thing or the best thing, my money is safe. But they would be needing an underwriter or a lead arranger who will connect Apple with the Texas board. And here we assume this to be a city bank. The so Citibank would be an underwriter between the Texas board and the, and the Apple who will make sure that, of course, we have taken an example of Apple. You can add a lot of companies that uh, you might have one investor, you might have more than one investor. So that is not a problem. So in case of Apple Inc, Apple Inc is investing because they know my money is safe. Texas board is safe because if anything would happen, Goldman Sachs will pay. Goldman Sachs would act as a DPLC oblique or custodian. Everything is in the control of the Goldman Sachs. This underwriter is also safe. Boss, if anything wrong would happen, nobody will put the gun on my head because we have Goldman Sachs here. Theoretically speaking, this is a credit enhancement procedure. But if this is different, then the, this is completely different but practically credit enhancement procedures work. Because credit enhancement procedures are completely different than DPLC. They are, we have six types of credit, credit enhancement procedures across the globe which is something on a consulting note. To cut the long video, VRDO, Variable Rate Demand Obligation is one of the finest inventions we have in the municipal markets. I strongly believe that rather than following a model whereby government will get a tax revenue, direct tax or an indirect tax revenue, which government will further allocate it to the municipals for the development of the city or the country, this model is obsolete model. On the contrary, we should going with the US based model whereby municipals are authorized to issue directly. However, there is a caveat here. The caveat is that when a municipal issue VRDO, it is a duty of the regulator, which is Security and Exchange Commission, oblique the respective regulator of respective countries to make sure that caveat should not be completely outward or it should not be an outlier. That Philadelphia, say Texas, uh, Philadelphia, Washington and different countries of US and different states of US have a covenant, common, common covenant, but here you have a covenant which is completely different. So be careful from that perspective as well, to be honest. This is how the VRDO works. VRDO is one of the finest instrument. The DPLC is adding a lot of flavor. DPLC is being issued by a lot of US corporates, you know, Yes, one of the good things which you talk about DPLC is DPLC sometimes is known as LOC, line of credit. This is because this is a line of credit Goldman has given to the Texas. This is for today. In case you have any questions, our Skype ID is Rahul5327. Our platform www.fixedincome.global, website www.treasuryconsulting.in mobile 9899242978 email is rahul.magan at the rate tajiconsulting.in we are coming up with the second phase of our fixed income platform and uh, that phase would be starting in june and hopefully the first week of august this phase was over immediately when this phase would over the company will start the another phase which is somewhere in the october and that we would be winding up somewhere in december so this year we are coming up with the two phases the second phase which we are expecting to launch in June and uh, expected to go live by August we would be more focusing about the family office investment desk and the pension fund management desk. We would be the youngest company in the history of financial markets who would have the pension fund management desk. The next phases which are coming in October and November, these phases would have so many different things. So like promised, fixed income dot global is not a static site. Every year it is going to be changing at a very fast note. We thank you very much and have a wonderful time ahead.